Hello crafters, this is Gareth from Juice Creation and welcome to today's video. Most of you will probably remember the uh, Fernley Designs haul video I did last week and many of you have asked that I um, build the large um, storage box on camera. So that's what we're going to do today. Now I have pre-gessoed all my pieces and we're going to use the um, Do Crafts Creativity Essentials Clear Stamp Block A5 and the um, clear stamp and it's wood grain I believe it's called I think it's called wood grain let me just check wood, wooden boards so it's on my wood block as you can see and now the acrylic block is a great size and it's nice and thick it's not flimsy at all and it's got a grid pattern on it with centimeters and inches which is handy for us UK and internationals so the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to use my stays on because I'm going to be using some um, Distress inks, reinkers and sprays. So I'm just going to use my black stays on. Need to re-ink that as well. And I'm going to stamp the back. Now I'm not looking for perfection. I want this to be rustic and I want it to be aged so as you can see it doesn't fill up all of it so now here we come the uh, we're going to have to piece it together so selective stamping and inking so I'm just inking down this one side here turn it over and I'm going to attempt to match up the the ends and press down firmly all right and then I'm going to do across the top. So I'm just going to ink one of the bottoms. Again, and press down. Even though this is a big um, stamping block, it's not overly heavy. And that was one of the things I was worried about because obviously I have some, I have problems with, with, my, with my wrists. It's not considering it's a, a big block. It's not overly heavy. Now these um, this stamp this stamp is now available at memomadeit.com. And what I love about these stamps, I, I mean, I think they're acrylic, but the stays on just comes straight off. I know with some of my stamps, especially my photopolymer, it's really hard to get the um, the stays on ink off, but it just comes straight off. I'll show you. Look how much that's taken off. There's next to nothing left. I think that's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. So I'm going to put those to one side. And I have already done all the other pieces. So I have gessoed them and I have stamped them and I have inked and painted them. Now I am going to be using some Distress Ink Spray in Vintage Photo. Now my bottle broke, but um, it's the same stuff you get inside. And I'm going to be using one of the nylon paintbrushes I stocked in my store. A little pot, the actual uh, Vintage Photo Distress Ink Reinker. Because I'm going to spray this MDF with the spray. And I'm also going to be using it neat. And I'm going to paint it on in different areas just to give the different tones and on the side here I have a plastic sheet which I can add some of the paint and spray it to water it down and I'm also going to spray this as well so that it helps to move the color to fill this I wanted the the kind of rustic wooden finish to this particular one. I have decorated one already and I paper pieced it. I will show you that um, at the end of the video. So you can see how different they look when uh, you know when you do just a, a painting technique on them or if you you know do a paper piecing technique. It is completely up to you. I like to go back and dab just to give some of that nice kind of mottled effect. And I also like to just 
put blobs of this directly on it. And I think it's very important to go with the grain. Obviously this is manufactured grain because we've stamped it, but if you go like that, it just, it stands out too much. So try and go with the, um, the stamping direction of the grain. You can probably hear my mad parents in the background, I do apologize. Right, I'm just going to put my paintbrush to one side and bring over my heat gun. I'm just going to heat set it and I'll be right back. Okay, so that's now dry. Now there are lots of glues on the market. I have used all of these glues to put these MDF pieces together and they all work really well, particularly this um, Kalao Tacky glue and this um, original tacky glue from uh, Arlene's. So I'm going to use the, Ar uh, the Arlene's tacky glue. And obviously this comes with two longer pieces the base and four of these which are all the same size so I want this to be the inside of my box and I want these this particular side to be the inside of my box also so I need to make sure I got them in the right place got the right sides okay so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to run if I can get the lid off, I'm going to run Arlene's glue in each of the dips. So I run it in each of the dips as you can see just there. And then when I put this in, that will secure it. Because these, the way it's done, it's all ton and groove. As you can see, it's like that on the reverse. Okay, so the next thing I need to do is I need to put in some of these joint pieces. So I am going to put some glue on the dips of these pieces also. I'm not the biggest fan of getting my hands dirty, but when it comes to things like this, I really don't mind because I think it's because there's a, you know, there's a big, a big pad once it's finished. I need to make sure that I've got the right pieces. Don't glue anything in until you know you have them in the right place. Yep, that goes there too. And it, obviously the, um, the, it gets snug because you're putting extra layers on so the paint and, and so forth put, um, gives it a bit of extra um, it makes it st more snug oh come on glue that's it so just putting glue on the inside of these pieces like I stated this hurts my wrist and my fingers squeezing these bottles you in there bring that up like I said because of the extra um, because of the extra it can be a bit tight which is good because it, you know it's going to be strong and you want these things to last after all so squeeze you push it down just going to wipe off the excess glue it's not going in there why are you not going in Excuse the banging crafters. There we go. It's just got the extra. It's only tight because I've actually painted it and it's got more than one layer. So it's got the gesso plus it's got the stamping plus it's got the um the uh, distress inks. 
but like I said I don't mind the fact that it's it's tight to get in because I know it's going to be secure right so now again I'm going to put all the glue in all the troughs so to speak That's one thing I love about the Fernie Designs pieces, they are simple to put together. It can be a bit confusing because, you know, sometimes you think one side goes there but it doesn't. Oh, my hands. But you get so much for your, you know, your small outlay because they have great prices. Now, like I stated before, I do stock some of their um, pieces, but if you want to see the uh, the full range, and they do some great storage solutions for ink pads, for 12x12 12 12 papers, for 6x6 six six papers, I highly recommend you, you scoot over and have a look at their website. I will leave a link below. And again, excuse the banging. And obviously the glue will spurt out. Okay, now it comes to the the top and the bottom. I'm just going to to get a paintbrush. Get rid of that excess glue. This would look great as a shadow box as well. careful not to see these bits where I put in the glue be careful not to put paint in there because obviously that that will um, hinder the pieces going together as well so just another tip that I've learned over the years if you do get paint in there just use a, a pin or something to get it out Is the last piece it's like they're basically like a jigsaw puzzle how it looks when it's all put together so one thing I will probably do is I'm going to cover it now with a layer of Mod Podge and then I will bring both of them back together with you so I'm just going to paint it all over inside and out with a layer of Mod Podge I don't think you need to see that and then I will come back and show you both of the finished boxes that I've uh, decorated before I uh, Mod Podge it I'm using my Vintage Photo Distress Ink Pad and I'm going across all the flat pieces that are sticking out 
just to finish off those edges. And obviously these distress sinks are water soluble, so they will dilute slightly when I use the, uh, the Mod Podge. But I am simply going to get my Mod Podge. And this is also stocked in my store. And it's the uh, 16 fluid ounces and it's the gloss finish. And I don't mind the fact that it's gloss. And I'm just going to, just go to paint it all, just to seal it all in. So I'm going to do all of all of this and I'll be right back with you. Okay, the last thing I want to do is I want to put one of these handles on it and these handles are available from the store also. Now I'm just going to eyeball the, uh, the center. That looks about right. You could measure it if you wish. And I'm going to use my um, craft die pick and because the wood's not overly thick, I'm going to just simply pierce the wood. And I'm going to use some split pins, or as they're called in the US, brads, to secure this. So I've got these, these bronze split pins. So I'm just going to pop them in. So pop those in. And then on the inside, I'm simply just going to bend the the two points out, if I can find them. Come on, where are you? Okay, so then there's that on the front. So that's one. This is the other one that I did and I used um, paper and I inked it and distressed it and covered it again with the uh, Mod Podge and I can keep my cards in them. So that's the uh, that's the storage boxes and obviously you can have it so it's that way and have it as a storage shelf or a shelf you just display your, um, your things you've made or your wooden blocks, your, your stamps, your stencils really really good value for money so that's my ones thank you very much for watching if you've got any questions please don't hesitate to leave them below and i'll answer them as soon as i can and i will see you again on thursday take care now